Paul's farm. And I usually are in charge of our workers and uh, our tools that we use in our farming and so on. I, I'm going to talk about one tool I'm assuming you've never heard of before. It's called a fro. F-R-O-E, F-R-O-W. It's spelled two different ways. It's something we uh, use around the farm. It's used for construction and also for uh, other chores. Now, a fro is a piece of iron made by our blacksmith, and then I put the handle on. It's got a nice sharp edge. It's used to split things. When we built our house, there's two things we need. We need a roof, and we also need a lath on the wall to put our plaster on in our house. First, we'll talk about making a roof. The settlers usually came with an axe and a musket, pretty much the clothes on their back. But when they started building a nice house, they did it with a fro. And what you would do to make your roof is to get a block of wood and uh, take a piece of a log, split off the sides, and then your fro enabled you to make shingles for your roof. And what you would do is take your fro and a pallet and set it up about an inch wide. Then you'd bang your way through that bit of log. The piece would split off and you would have shingles that you would use for your roof. Now, if this was a frontier house, you would use the shingle just as it is. It's rough wood, all the grain shows. If this was a fancy house with a, a lot of decoration and uh, expense in it, we would then uh, plane off the edge so it would be nice and smooth going on the roof. The settler would spend a couple weeks before he actually built his house and the neighbors would come over and help him put it together and then they would have to shingle the roof. Now, for inside work, we have to make our lath. Mr. Hull's rooms were all just boards, about 2 by 10 inches, uh, set side by side to make all the interior walls. This is fine, but it doesn't look very nice. Most settlers wanted to improve their house and eventually be able to plaster. You can't plaster over just a, a, a wood wall. You have to have some way to have the plaster adhere to the wall. So they make lath. And this is a piece of lath similar to what we have in our house. Again, we use our fro, and we would start with a piece of lumber, maybe an inch by eight or ten inches wide, and you would cut all these little fingers in the lath, and then spread it apart, and you would nail this on the wall. This actually is a small piece, maybe a one by six, that we've expanded into about a 1 by 14 or 15 inch piece of uh, lath. And you can see how the fro will split this, say through a knot and so on, and it gives a good bend that your uh, uh, plaster will fit into and hold to the wall. The entire house is done with handmade lath like this. And we have another use for our fro as well. My first two froes, this is my oldest fro, is pretty banged up for all the years of wear. Use. The other one, our blacksmith made fairly recently, it's a good larger fro, and for wider pieces of wood and so on, that could split. Now, my last fro is curved. Same idea, it's got a sharp blade and this handle, and this is a Cooper's fro. This is used to make barrels, uh, buckets, and so on, so we have a curve. It would be the same idea. You would hammer down through your uh, log, and it would split off sections, but they wouldn't be uh, straight and square. They would be round to match this angle. And you'll notice this angle is also the same as a bucket. Now the fro cut off a big piece, we have to cut it into smaller pieces and get them all to fit well, and then uh, put it all together, and our blacksmith would take some hoops that would fit on there and hold my bucket together. 
And same with this. This is a bigger bucket, but same idea. It's all made of individual pieces that are cut by a fro and then assembled, and we put our uh, bands on it to hold it together. Now the fro is only one of many tools that we use around the house. We have our farm tools, field clearing tools, construction tools, and so on that we would talk about uh, as we go through the house. So if you have a chance to come and visit us, uh, we usually meet outside between the house and the barn and set up a couple tables, have all our tools out to discuss. Most of our, our visitors from the east don't have uh, any real acquaintance or knowledge of the tools we use. So it makes for a nice half hour or so to discuss all the different things we do on the farm. Thank you very much. Thank you.